it was a period of just, you know, one long gasp for breath. You just couldn't even believe, you know, every time hearing more and more details. Very quickly I located the epicenter of the earthquake and uh, noted how close it was to areas that we had traveled and we had not heard from people in those areas or heard news of those areas. They were still completely cut off. Um, many of the trails into those areas were destroyed by landslide, so they were completely inaccessible. I lay awake at night just hearing the sounds and, and feeling the experience of being there and I realized that I had 7,000 images from some of the destroyed areas trapped in my hard drive on my computer. And so I stopped everything that I was doing and spent a week of all-nighters editing a completely new body of work to tell the story of how beautiful these high remote villages are, were, and will be in Nepal. I use black and white to show the transcendence of light um, because that way the color of light is the same, whether it's a, a blue light or a warm light. It has a poetry about the world and the way light weaves over objects and faces and through trees and over some of the most iconic structures of our times. But I felt for this work that color lent a sense of truth, but I felt like seeing the real color of the women's weavings and the real color of their faces so deeply tanned by the, the sun and the high mountains and the extreme weather and the color of the crops and the blue and the sky lent another level of storytelling. I, I went with a very open mind, photographing everything, being very present, um, and what emerged was this remarkable story about mothers. Um, it was really phenomenal to see their role in society and how strong the women are and how connected they are to each other and also their very deep relationships as they age. Photographing the young monks was amazing because they were truly little boys. They were playing paper airplane out behind some of the construction where they couldn't be seen. They were walking on stilts that they had made out of sticks. They were playing with caterpillars. They were just little boys living in a boarding school up at probably about 10,000, 11,000 feet elevation. From the time of the earthquake, we immediately started wondering about them. We had friends in the next village over and they said that they were okay, um, but the definition of okay meant that they were alive and just making it. They did not receive aid for about 12 days and eventually they were airlifted to Kathmandu and that story made the cover of the New York Times. So it was shocking to see these young monks on the cover of the New York Times after spending several days with them in, in Nepal. There's definitely a leap between conceptual art and humanitarian work. However, I find the same thread of spirit weaves through both, and that is luminosity, and that's joy. Um, what is the strength that sustains people in difficult circumstances? And what is the beauty that we all carry within uh, that really is the underpinning of my conceptual work? So. I think that the two, although they seem very far apart, really are supported by the same idea. Some of the villages that are 
shown in Beautiful Resilience were described as areas of extreme devastation. Um, I actually don't know. There are so few reports from those high remote areas. Um, but I am going back. I'm going back in about a month and a half and we'll visit some of these areas. So I'm really looking forward to completing the circle then. And I'm also looking forward to giving the people there some of these books and some of their own images. I look forward to the schoolgirls seeing themselves and to the mothers seeing photos of their babies who are now two years older. I look forward to people seeing uh, images of buildings in their villages that they'd grown up with that maybe are no longer there and hopefully the image can help them rebuild or remember. And I also hope that the book will be a way for them to show their grandchildren and their children who are yet to be what life was like before the quake.